provision. Thank you, Lord, for healing and for delivering. Lord, thank you for being all things to all of us, Lord. We bless your name this morning and we give you praise. You alone are worthy in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Give him a hand clap. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Roberto. Thanks, worship team. Thank you, Tim. Great job as always. Amen. We want to welcome uh, Roberto back for a for whatever this is, amen, it's a visit, and we're, great, we're grateful for it, praise the Lord, and uh, great to have his dad with us, God bless you, sir, we appreciate you being here, amen, Suzanne's friend, praise the Lord, appreciate you being here with us, thank the Lord, and all the rest of you, thanks for, because you knew what you were getting, that's even a bigger thing, <laughs> praise the Lord, we got a lot of people out of town today, along with uh, some of our kids are off camping, what kind of plan was that? I mean, think about it. It's pouring down rain. I mean, it's been like a monsoon, and they want to go camp near the water. Bless their, bless their hearts. <laughs> That's exactly right. That is youth. I was thinking when Tim was talking about uh, David facing Goliath, you know, and, man, uh, imagine that funeral. I mean, that had to be a giant undertaking. I, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Glad we already took up the offering. Well, you know they say geology rocks, but geography is where it's at. Praise the Lord. We're just kind of relaxing, and God's in a good mood. Praise the Lord. Speaking of geography. Did you know England doesn't have a kidney bank, but they do have a liver pool? <laughs> Those of you, in, if you get older, you may want to keep that in mind if you need an organ. Okay, headline. Guy jumps off the Paris Bridge. He's insane. S-E-I-N-E. -E. Okay, praise God. You win. Thank you, James. Wait a minute. Write that down because I'll use it next week. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. He's happy all the time. Amen. And he wants us to be in a good mood. So praise God. You, you can be in a good mood in spite of this, what I've already said. Praise God. But I want us, I want us to begin this morning uh, in Psalms. Sheila, if you will, Psalms 103. And we'll read verses 1 through 5. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Again, welcome, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. And we've been talking about over the last, I don't know, weeks, uh, off and on at different times over months probably, but our identity in Christ, who we are, that we are a manifestation of God in this earth, that's what we are once we're born again. We're spirit beings, amen. And, uh, and we provide the interface between heaven and earth. We are the, the connection between the heavens and the earth. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're from above. We're born from above after we're born again. And as uh, children of God, as heirs and joint heirs with Christ, this identity that we have uh, then determines the way that we are to live if we will use the wisdom that God's given us through his word. The problem with most Christians is we just we get born again and then we just wait for a set of rules to follow and then we spend the rest of our life breaking the rules and feeling sorry about it. But God fulfilled all the rules. Jesus kept all the rules so that we could live in grace and mercy and love and forgiveness and the way that we do that, the way we get these promises, is the same way that God gave them, by declaring what is ours. Amen? So that's what I'm going to talk to you about this morning in a roundabout way, which is the way I always do it in a roundabout way, because I'm random. Praise the Lord. But anyway, here he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits 
who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. I hope you're really listening to what I'm saying. Because, you know, we read Scripture and it just goes right over our head. But look at this. This is powerful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. He forgives all. Everybody say all. all. That would be everyone. Amen. Thine iniquities, who healeth all, all of your diseases, any disease that comes along. Amen. He heals them. Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord. Now, if you, if you, looked at, in, if you look at it in the King James, that, that in, in verse 5 there, there is, uh, he said, things is in italics, and so is, so that thy. So here's where it actually read in the original is, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. He gives you good things to say. He gives you the right things to say so that you get the right results, so that you get the results that He wants you to have. And that is that your, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, that may not be important to some of you, but when you get closer to this age, it becomes far more important. Praise the Lord. So that's what He's telling us. This is Scripture, folks. I mean, this isn't just a wishful thinking or some hope that we have. This is, the, this is the fact. This is what God wants us to experience. Amen? So now, Sheila, if you will. Now, He says He has forgiven all of our iniquities, right? We read that. He said He has healed all of our diseases, right? All right. Now look at this in Matthew chapter 9. And now we're going to read verses 2 through 7. Matthew 9, verses 2 through 7. Because here's the deal. Sometimes we get to the place where we will accept the fact that we're saved. You know, for whatever that means to us. And for most of us, it meant, well, I'm not going to hell. That's basically what it is. You've got to die to get the benefit from it, right? That's not what he's taught us. But then we, we struggle with whether or not we're even saved. If we finally get to the place where, well, okay, I'm, I've got that fixed now. I'm, I, I, I am saved. I am not going to go to hell. But the problem is then we don't get any of the benefits that salvation provides. Yeah. Healing is as real, as true as salvation. Yeah. You know, when you talk about just not going to hell, you know, sozo means all of this stuff, but what we're talking about is when a person says, well, I got saved, generally what they're saying is I'm not going to be judged for my sins anymore. I'm not going to go to hell because Jesus paid the price for it. But he also suffered for your healing. He also became poor that you could become rich. And he says they're all the same. There's no difference between any of them. Right? So, in, in the, and this is what he's saying. Uh, Jesus is saying this in Matthew chapter 9. He said, Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, first of all, you'd look at that and you'd think, well he, did, well, he wasn't asking for forgiveness of sins. He's sick. Right? And behold, certain of the scribes within them, uh, said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. Amen? Verse 5, if you will go back up there. For whether is it easier, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven? Or to say it, you're healed, arise and walk. What Jesus is saying is there's no difference. Right. Takes the same thing to get you saved as it does to get you healed. Yeah. And Jesus was the answer. And here's what he does. He says... Say, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say take up your bed and walk or that you're healed? See, there's some saying that needs to be going on, amen, for us to get the benefit of what God has provided for us. From salvation all the way through the gamut of everything that God has promised us in His Word. Amen. Faith begins, someone much wiser than me quote, or said this, Faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't know the will of God about a certain situation, how can you have faith for it? Amen? If you don't know that God's will is that you be healed, how can you have faith for healing? 
right? If you, if you don't know that God's will for you is to prosper, right. then how do you have faith for prosperity? Right. You see what I'm saying? So this, this is how it works. The scripture says, for if God, who spared not his only son, but freely gave him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? That's what we're talking about. If God gave Jesus, or if Jesus gave his life for our sins, why would we question whether or not he would give us everything the same way? Exactly. Praise the Lord. In other words, if God loved me so much that he didn't even hold back his only son, what makes me think he would hold back healing? What makes me think he would hold back blessing? What makes me think that he would hold back prosperity or any good thing? Amen? It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes. Praise God. It's from this position of peace and rest, amen, that the kingdom flows. Yes. The kingdom is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. It's everything that God has promised amen. in the kingdom. Look at Mark now, if you will, Sheila. Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 26 through 29. Mark 4, 26 through 29. These are scriptures that are pretty familiar to most of you, but we're going back over it again anyway. How appropriate. <laughs> Praise God. Are we there? Mark 4, 26 through 29. Thank God we still have a book. So, the, so is the kingdom of God. This is uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 26. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Okay? Verse 14 says that the sower sows the word. Okay? So the word is the seed. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but that ought to be an encouragement for every one of us. You simply, this is how simple it is. You just sow the word. You sow the seed of the word of the kingdom of God. You sow it in your life. You sow it in the lives of the people that you come into contact with, the people that you interact with, and then you go to sleep. I can do this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In other words, rest in the power of the seed. You just plant the seed. Once you've planted the seed, you're done. Rest. Forget about it. Take a nap. Amen? Because verse 27, if you can go there, Sheila, it tells us we don't have any idea how this works. Right? And should sleep, rise night and day, the seed should spring up and grow, but he doesn't know how. So we don't have to know. We don't have, we don't have any idea how this happens. The seed in the earth does it without any help. Now, I'd rather plant the seed... Trust God to do the work and just go to bed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul said, one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. Amen. Matthew 6, verse 28. Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. How do they grow? They neither toil nor spin. Now here's the deal. Most of us were raised or were born again in the toil and spin church. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I mean, come on, let's just be honest. We toiled, we labored, we struggled. We worked, we strived, but we weren't arrayed all that wonderful. 
We were struggling all the time. Because as soon as you met one criteria, you found out there was another. If you ever met the first one. But when we consider the lilies, see, they were arrayed in far more splendor, it says, than Solomon in all of his glory. It's because the power is in the seed. You know, the, the lily is a symbol of resurrection life. That's why we always have them at Easter time. They're always out in the churches, in our own homes and everything else. They, they're a symbol of resurrection, of new birth, new life, right? Look at Song of Solomon here. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 2. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 2. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. So the king, he describes his bride as a lily among thorns. The thorns are a symbol of the curse. God cursed the ground, right? When Adam failed, when Adam sinned, when Adam rejected God and, and went his own way, refused to believe God. God cursed the ground and said it would bring forth thorns and thistles. Right? From the time Adam fell. Under the curse, man would have to earn his bread by the sweat of his brow. But before the curse, he wasn't doing anything except just benefiting from everything that was there. It was all made available. All he had to do was just get it, just take it, eat it, have it, whatever. Amen? But now he's got to work by the sweat of his brow. 4,000 years later, the last Adam shows up in the garden that we were talking about here this morning, that Tim mentioned, Gethsemane. And he was in that garden, and he sweated until he sweat blood, the Scripture says. He also, by the way, had a crown of thorns placed on his brow. Amen? And that's important because just one drop of divine blood touching a cursed earth reverses the curse. And we never have to earn God's favor by toil and labor and sweat again. It's a gift. It's grace. It's free. He paid for it so that we could have it. Another interesting fact is that the word Sinai, where the law was given, also means my thorns. So when he describes his bride as a lily among thorns, he's talking about his people who have resurrection life, who have been redeemed from the curse of Adam and the curse of the law. Praise the Lord. A lily, lilies among thorns. Praise the Lord. We just, I, I heard this the other day. The strongest man was Samson. He failed. He sinned. The wisest man, Solomon, he sinned. The best man, David, he sinned. The new man, that's us in Christ. Never known sin. You say, well, wait a minute now. No, I'm talking about from God's perspective. You are sinless. He became sin so that you become the righteousness of God in him. Praise the Lord. And the reason is because of the power of resurrection life. We grow without toil, without spinning. Praise the Lord. John 12 and verse 24. John 12, 24. Jesus said, he's speaking of himself, he said, unless a seed, corn of wheat, fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. Right? Very, very, I said, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. We're still talking about seed. So this seed can produce after its own kind. That would be Jesus, the Word of God. He said, if I die, I can reproduce perfect offspring, sinless humanity. That would be us, amen. John chapter 6, verse 63. You see, you know, I mean, this is why we ought to be 
in the best mood. We ought to be the happiest people. We ought to be the most carefree. We ought to be the most, call it whatever you want, loose, just, you know, unhung up. Why? Because... We're all a bunch of flakes, but he's, tell, he's declared us righteous and perfect and holy, and, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Amen. We don't have to spend our life looking over our shoulder, every past mistake, every possible future mistake, every present mistake. We, don't have to, we can just forget about it and trust in his kindness, in his goodness, in his mercy, in his blood that has delivered us and set us free to have an abundant life, a life without anxiety and stress and freaking out and worrying and blah, blah, blah. I mean, just like Tim said, as long as I know I'm good with him, I don't care about the rest of it. It'll all take care of itself eventually. You know, people get mad and upset and angry. I'm just like everybody else. There's times, you know, you just think about in traffic and you could just, you know, hate somebody. You know, I mean, just for a little bit, for a moment or two. That's sin. He said it's murder. You look at some woman. Come on, it's summertime. Got, there's commercials that I almost have to turn my head if Sally's in the room. <laughs> Come on. But you know what I'm saying? But I don't have to, you know, I don't have to spend every waking moment repenting and asking forgiveness and worrying and fretting over every random thought that goes through my head or I'm delivered yeah. Yeah. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ yeah. I have been perfected no matter what that woman says <laughs> praise the Lord <laughs> I said God what God says that's what matters right so it is the spirit that quickeneth or gives life the flesh profiteth nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. Amen? There is spirit life in God's Word. This thing is more than just, you know, grammar. This, this is life. If you know what it is, it is spirit life. He said the words that I speak, they're not just words. It is spiritual life that I'm speaking to you. Praise the Lord. There is a faith force. Amen. A spiritual power that is capable. Now listen to what I'm saying. This is the word of God. This is the truth. There is a spiritual power that's capable of producing what God has promised. Absolutely. It's by saying what he said. Amen. That's why he gave this to us. Exactly. Not as a rule book. But as a key to opening the kingdom of God and receiving every benefit that he has for us so that we can receive everything that he paid for. Amen. It would have been foolish. I mean, how stupid would it be for God to die to give us all things that pertain to life and godliness, is what the scripture says, and then withhold it from us. It makes absolutely no sense. He would be a schizophrenic wacko. Yeah. He would, not I'm not afraid to say that because he's not. I would be afraid to say it if I thought he was, because he'd probably get me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? But here's the deal. It has to be received. Yes, it, it has to be conceived in the human spirit or in the heart. Just like being born again, just the salvation, not going to hell thing has to, you've got to believe it. You, at some point it has to come to you and you go, okay, I believe. This is what yes. Tim was talking about earlier. Yes. You may feel something, you may not feel something. But you believe. It isn't your feelings that determine the truth or not. Right. It's your settling it in your heart by faith. Yes. Amen. All right. Uh, if you will, Sheila, let's go back to, again to Mark chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. This is where he says, the kingdom is, you know, you sow in seed and it works. He said, so the kingdom of God is if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He doesn't know how, Right. So you don't have to understand everything about God's methods. But you have to understand how to apply it. Yes. He can do whatever he wants. All you got to know is, I accept it. I receive it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply this to my life, right? You hold fast to your confession of faith. That is the challenge. The enemy comes for the word. He's not, he doesn't care a thing about you. No. He hates God. And God and his word are one. He always comes for the word. He's not coming for you. 
you're irrelevant as far as he's concerned. He just, he, he, you're not even significant enough for him to hate, probably. But you're a means of, of attacking God that he otherwise doesn't have. And the only way he can do that is to get you in unbelief, which is what he did with Adam, and he's been doing it ever since, to get you to believe a lie that you're not the offspring of God. What did he tell Adam? He said, you know, if you, if you get enough information here uh, about good and evil, you'll be just like God. Well, he was in the image of God. That's how he was created. But Adam didn't believe that, obviously, or he wouldn't have gone to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil trying to be more like God. And religion's been playing that game ever since. But God has delivered us from the knowledge of good and evil and made us innocent. Yes. Therefore, we are like God. Yes. Praise God. Okay, Romans 10.10. 10. So you have to hold fast to your confession. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, Look, I only say what my Father says. I only do what my Father does. What was he saying? He was holding fast to the confession that I am the child of God. I am the last Adam. Amen? That's, we're born again, but we have to, we have to there's, a, there's a battle for our identity. For who you really are. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Now, if you're, I'll just use somebody that was a big deal when I was young. John, J. Paul Getty. Right, remember his kid got, you know, kidnapped or his grandson or whatever it was. That kid wasn't worth a flip to anybody, you know, the average person. But to the old man, obviously he was worth millions because the old man was worth millions. John Paul Getty, J. Paul Getty was worth billions. So the kid became worth millions, right? Why? For no other reason than he happened to be the progenitor, the, the offspring of this rich old man. Now, I don't want to make God seem like J. Paul Getty, but I'm just saying the analogy here is clear. We are the offspring of God. We have an inheritance that is exceeding abundantly above and beyond anything that we can imagine or think. The, the enemy doesn't, if for us to succeed, God succeeds. Right? So he's out to stop this thing. He doesn't want... I mean, look, imagine if all of the believers were living in the fullness of our faith. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Yeah. The reason people don't want to be a part of it is because they see us, you know, skulking around and complaining. I'm talking about generally speaking. And, f and finding fault with everybody else and complaining and, oh, my God, you know, I don't know what's going to happen and how's this going to work out and, you know... My back is killing me, and all these crazy things that we do and say. They look at us and they say, why would I want that? At least now I can get drunk without feeling guilty about it. I mean, I have an escape, right? I have... <laughs> okay, wow, that's uncomfortable. But I'm just saying, maybe that's what somebody would do. Okay, I mean, that's my point is this. They're thinking the only real peace... In this world is get high, get another woman, get another man, get, get some liquor, get something to get my mind off of the mess that I got to deal with. Right. Right? right? And God is saying, I want to meet all of your needs according to my riches and glory. I want you to have peace. I want you to have rest. Amen. Wherewith the weary shall find rest so that you will be attractive to people who don't know me. Praise the Lord. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, which is what we're talking about here, right? So when you confess or when you speak God's word, you're sowing seeds. Seeds that have to produce after their own kind. If you're, if you're sowing seeds of prosperity, it has to produce prosperity if you don't deviate from the message. Amen? Amen. Uh, in Isaiah, it says, His word it comes down like snow, like rain, waters the earth, and forces it to produce. If he can find somebody, if my word, he said, my word will not come back to me void. In other words, I said it, I, it's been written down so that you can read it and say it. So when you say it and it comes back to me 
out of your mouth, it cannot come back to me void. It has to produce, amen, what I send it to produce. The seed has to produce. If it finds ground, which is your heart, your spirit, it has to produce whatever that word is. Amen? amen? What happens is, and we all know it because we've all done it. We're, we're confessing one thing and then something kind of blindsides us or we don't recognize it or we're just down in the dumps or we're feeling sorry for ourselves or whatever. And we open our mouth and say something that's totally contradictory to the Word of God. And then we wonder why. If you go out, my wife's a gardener. I'm a hole digger. I don't know nothing about it. I don't know the weeds from the plants except that I know how to determine a weed as you pull up pull them out of the ground, a amen, and if there are weeds, they'll come back. If there are flowers, they're gone for the year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In fact, I got it. I bought, we bought some fruit trees. This is just a side note in case you're looking for apple trees. In fact, it, it was an apple tree that we bought and planted. We had an apple tree, but we bought another one so that they would hopefully do what they do, pollinate, cross-pollinate, and produce more apples. Well, the, uh, the nursery guy gave me some free insects, for the pollination. I just call them freebies. <laughs> it was really hard to get that one in. I had to really work. But I'm just saying, God, the seed that God gives us has to produce after its kind. If you don't believe this, then you're saying that God's a liar. Whoa! That's not a good thing. You've got to do it, though. That's the, you don't need to know how it works. I, I don't know how it all works. I just need to know how to apply it. Like electricity. I don't know. I even worked in electrical maintenance and didn't know very much about it. I just knew enough not to grab a hold of anything that's hot, you know, I mean, when it's turned on. But I'm saying this. I, you don't need to know everything about electricity to enjoy the benefits of electricity. You just got to know how to turn it on. You just got to know how to apply it, right? Flip the switch, turn the dial, whatever it is, push the button. That's the way this is. You don't need to have perfect theology about it. You just got to apply You got to know how to apply it to your life. And this is how you do it. You say what he said, and you'll get what he promised. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 4, again, verse 26. Again, he said, the sower sows the seed. I'm just doing this to aggravate Sheila, to be quite honest with you, she has to keep going back to that same scripture. He said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground, right? God does not sow the seed. No. We do. God furnishes the seed. Yeah. But we have to sow it. Yeah. Right? He gives us his word. But we have to apply it. So in Mark chapter 4, in, in Matthew chapter 13, he tells us the seed is the Word of God. It couldn't be any more clear. He s says it flat out, yeah. right? So look at Matthew uh, 12, verse 35. Because here's where we make the mistake. And I hear it all the time. And I'm not innocent of this either. I'm just saying, somebody will say, well, I don't know why I get text messages. And I don't know why God isn't doing this for me. And why God hasn't blessed me. So-and-so got this blessing, and I don't know why God is... I know why, because you're telling me why. Yeah. Exactly. Right? You ought to be rejoicing with that person that just got blessed and saying, I'm receiving mine, you know, in Jesus' name, or just shut up. Amen. Right? I mean, if you can't say what God's saying, don't say anything. Right. So a good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things, and an evil man... Out of the evil treasure of the heart bringeth forth evil things. Amen. So you can, that's what that tells me is that you can sow the devil's words in your heart just like you can sow God's. And that's exactly what Adam did. Amen. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again just because I love saying it. When you, when you can't say what God says, shut the hell up. Because you're saying stuff that's coming from the pit. You're, you're saying stuff that's coming from a demonic influence. If it's contradicting this word, it's coming from hell. Yes. Yes. Amen. So just don't say it. Exactly. If you can't say what God said. You know, they used to say, uh, my mother used to talk about this. She'd say, uh, 
if, uh, if you don't have anything good to say about anybody, join our bridge club. <laughs> I'm just joking. My mother really wasn't like that at all. But we all know people, you know, that if you don't have anything good to say, come sit by me. I could use the information, you know. But that's what happens. We, we have to say what God says. We have to, that's the discipline. The only real discipline there is, is to discipline this unruly member, amen, that the tongue is the ruination of so many people and so many hopes and dreams because we just speak it right out of existence. We just talk ourselves right out of what God has promised us, amen. So what you confess is obviously important, amen. If God said it, it is an established truth. He cannot lie. All right? So that truth won't necessarily manifest unless you sow it in your heart. In other words, there's all kinds of stuff in here, but it doesn't happen just because it's written in this book. And it doesn't even happen just because you read it out of this book. It happens when you read it, believe it, and begin to agree with it. That's called renewing the mind. Amen? And that's where your access is to all of these promises of God. Amen? You have to agree with it. You have to believe it. And you add your faith to it, and you speak it. Yes. Yes. That's how you get the seed in the ground. Praise the Lord. Uh, Luke chapter 17, uh, Sheila, verses 5 and 6. Luke 17, verse 5 and 6. Christianity is so, I love what Tim was saying. Somebody asked him, are you religious? No, I'm, I'm spiritual. It's true. Christianity was never meant to be a religion. It's about a relationship with our Heavenly Father that wants to give us an inheritance, wants access into this realm, and give us access to the next realm or to the spirit realm. As born-again believers, we have both. Amen. But what happens is most religious people walk around acting all flaky and weird and strange trying to make people think that they're spiritual. Spiritual people don't have to act weird. They just be themselves and they are spirits. You can't help the fact that you're a spirit. And if, if you are a spirit being, how many of you know, eventually you're going to bump into spiritual stuff. You'll, re you'll begin to recognize, hey, that's, that's just not natural. That's not normal. It's like what Tammy was talking about. Why? You become sensitive your sensors come out, right? You become sensitive to the things of the Spirit. And you can be just as normal and natural and human as anybody else. You don't have to be all spooky and weird. Praise the Lord. All right. The apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea, and it would obey you. So he said, if you had the tiniest amount of faith to where it's almost unseeable, unrecognizable, if you had just that much faith and you said to this particular tree, be plucked up and be cast into the sea, it would obey you. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, I was... Uh, I was sitting, I was upstairs. Sally, I think, had already gone to bed or was going to bed. In fact, she, because she hollered at me and she said, are you watching the uh, complete signal loss up there? If anybody that has satellite knows, that's all there was on. It was kind of like when I was five years old watching the old test pattern from Ames. Yeah. Channel 5, just zzzz, We sat there for hours thinking, man, won't be long now. Something will be coming on, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sitting up there watching the complete signal loss. And I was just really starting to get into it. I mean, it was storming. It was, y'all were, I mean, you heard the rain and the thunder. And, the, and I'm thinking, okay, I got a battery back, because the electric had gone off once and come back, right back on. But I got a battery backup thing for the sump pump, but I'm thinking that's probably only for about six or eight hours before that thing will die, you know. All of these negative things. I'm thinking everything in the basement is going to be floating, you know, at the kitchen door when we get up in the morning. And all these other things, kids at the lake and all that stuff. And I just started saying, I'm not taking it. I'm not going to put up. We're not going to have any kind of damage. We're not going to have any kind of 
destruction to my home or to my family, to my property. Just not going to allow it. It isn't going to happen. Now, here's the deal. Now, I really do, I'm not just saying this because it goes with my message. I, I actually do things like this. Now, i got to tell you, every thought in my mind was saying, well, you just opened a can of worms here, yeah. Speedo, because it's still pouring down, and it's carrying on. All you did was make the enemy mad. All you did was tick him off. Yeah. And we know he's the god of this world, right. of the natural, right? And the Lord spoke to me as clearly as I've ever heard him, just inside, and he said, but he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. Uh -huh. And I just said, you're a liar. Make all the noise you want. No damage is coming. Amen. I got up this morning with a little help from my wife. Ah! I was like a quarter to seven. I'm thinking, my God, an intruder. He stabbed my wife or something. I don't know what. I said, what is going on? And she said, oh, I'm sorry. I was a dream. Oh, <laughs> sorry. And she's right back to sleep. And I'm laying there like that, waiting for the next knife wound. You know, it's like psycho. I can't go back to sleep. So I got up and went and checked the sump pumps and everything. Anyway, everything was good. I told you I was random. That's why we do this. But God did what God said he would do because I said what God wanted me to say. For, I mean, come on, when it's storming like that, and it was, it's been crazy the last couple of nights. I mean, I'm, it just really coming down hard. But God is still in charge. Yeah. Amen? He that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Amen? So, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. You can say to some stuff, and it'll change it. I mean, think about this. Uh, I'm just thinking, in, for example, Jane's diagnosed with cancer. Not good at all. I mean, it was not good. I remember the testimonies. I remember him talking about it. But God speaks to them and says, here's what I want you to do. Now, it didn't make a whole lot of sense maybe in the natural. In fact, it might have even seemed a little sacrilegious. You know, stand on the Bible or, you know what I'm saying? Because we all heard that you shouldn't even lay it on the floor or the ground. It ought to be up someplace. But yeah, I'm just saying. But when they said what God said, they got what God promised. Now, you could have done anything you wanted to. You could have said, well, that's just insane. That's just stupid. We'll just pray about this, and we'll just do that. No, they did what God said and got what God promised. That's how it works. We don't get to make up the plan. We just apply the plan and watch it work. It's called faith. All right, so we have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We believe. If you believe, you're going to say something. Regardless of what you believe. So if you believe the negative, you're going to speak. Now, we all know people that are just negative. I mean, and they, they never have a positive thing comes out of their mouth. And you want to run from them like the plague when you see him coming, because you know if you spend any time with him, you're going to be so bummed out and so depressed before you get out of there, you're going to have to go, you know, on a three-day fast and just continually confess the word just to recover. Praise the Lord. I'm not naming names. I'm just saying we know they're out there. Praise God. Nobody else is going to do this. You have to do it. No, God's not going to do it for you. You have to do it. You have to speak the word of God. Amen. And then it becomes seed that is sown in your heart, sown in your spirit. Faith works in the spirit. Faith won't work in your head. And you already know it. Because the moment you start thinking about these things, spiritual truths, and you start rationalizing, you're thinking, that's just stupid. That, I, don't, that, I mean, I've got this report. I've got this Thing. I've, got the, I've got all this evidence. I've got all these facts. And you're telling me I just say what God said? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. What, think about, just for, here's an example. Mary, the mother of Jesus. We don't know how, 14, 15-year-old girl. Never slept with a man. Never had any uh, relationship. An angel speaks to her and says, Blessed art thou, 
Mary, you know, you're going to be the mother of God. His name shall be called Emmanuel. She says, but I mean, I don't even, I've never even known a man. I've never even been intimate with a man. And then she says, nevertheless, be it unto me, even as you have spoken. In other words, she just simply agreed. Now, that's a, that is a miracle. That is obviously. How do, you, how do you make sense of it? There's no scientific, biological, neurological. I mean, there's just no way that can happen. They had thousands of years of history to tell them it only works one way. Right? Had the meeting with the you know dad and mom the bee, birds and the bee. I mean we know that's it just this is the only way it works. It doesn't happen any other way. You don't get it from a toilet seat. You don't get it from you know wearing somebody else's clothes. I mean, it, it, you, there's only one way it can happen. And she said, "Okay, I know all that information. I got all those facts, but I'm going to believe what God said because that's the truth in spite of the facts." And the result was, our God is birthed into this world. Yes. Praise God. That's how it works. You believe and you agree. Amen. And you speak it. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, verse 7. If faith does not work in your head. Amen. I think maybe that's where the expression ignorance is bliss. And the more information you've got, the more difficult it is to have faith. So sometimes it's better just to be stupid and believe God. Yeah. Sure. Praise God. If I have any success at all, I'm, that's what I'm attaining. You know, Low IQ, but a lot of hope. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. You can survive this way. You can have a good life. So because the carnal mind is enmity against God, because it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the natural mind, that's what he's talking about, the carnal mind, just the natural intellect. It's at odds with God. And the reason it's at odds with God is because the natural mind is not subject, subjected or submitted to the law of God, which is New Testament law of faith. That's what he's talking about. You do not get faith up here through your natural mind in fact we all know this even your salvation is questioned here your own intellect will try to tell you well i don't think you're even really saved i mean after all would you have done that would you have said this would you have thought that would you have you know so it's cha it challenges your faith all the time because your faith is a spirit thing amen and your spirit is what got born again when you got saved it's perfect. It's pristine. It's just like Jesus. It's this, uh, the rest of this mess that we've got to deal with. And that's why we renew our mind to get it to follow, amen, the path that God has given us. Praise the Lord. So he's re referring to the law of faith here, and your head will not operate in the law of faith. It wasn't designed to. It was never meant to, right? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You speaking the word is setting the goal by sowing seeds in the kingdom of God within you. Amen? It's a scientific fact that you, your own voice resonates more with you than any other voice that there is. Even though it doesn't sound like, when you hear it on a recording, when you hear it on a recording, it doesn't sound like you, right? That's because you're inside, not outside. You, you know, really, I mean, that's the way it works. So you're, when you hear your voice played back on a recording or something, it doesn't sound like you. Why? Because you've always heard your voice from the inside out. And that's the voice that has the greatest value and import in your life. That's why you confess the word, because that word resonates with your spirit, not just your intellect, not just what you're hearing, but what is who you are and what you are. So that's, that's the point behind the scientific reason behind confession of the word. Amen? Praise God.
I was just thinking I was going to give you a, a scientific joke, but I, I knew I wouldn't get a reaction. <laughs> reaction. Science. Praise the Lord. So then, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When you sow the word, you're setting a goal for your spirit. Amen? To produce the fulfillment of that goal. And your spirit can do it because it's just like God. But you have to do it the way God does it. You can't dumb things down to a natural way of doing things and expect to get the supernatural results, to get the spiritual results. Amen? So this work, it'll work in any area. Physical healing. It'll work finances, spiritual matters, relationships. Amen? Speak what God said about you to yourself. You declare it out loud. You say it, you confess it, and faith will come for it. Amen? Scripture says faith, Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means it has, it has texture, it has solidity. It, faith is what Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on. As long as he was in faith. It had substance. It, it wasn't like the water. I mean, if it had been, he would have sunk. But faith is substance. Faith is a reality. Faith is your financial breakthrough. Faith is your healing. Faith is your salvation. You, you see what I'm saying? Faith has substance. It's for real if you will stand on it, if you will declare it, if you won't give in to the lies of the devil. Amen? Amen? He, he gives us the good things of our mouth and renews our youth like the eagles. Now, if you're saying, and I, I, hey, listen, it comes out of my mouth every once in a while, I'll look in the mirror and go, who is that old man? You know what I'm saying? But the truth is, he'll renew my youth. I'll continue, amen, to, to, like, Abe, or like uh, Moses. He was 120 years old. His eyes hadn't dimmed. Amen. His strength was still there. Right? So, you know, I just... Let it get to the point where I needed glasses, and then I put a stop to it right then. But, praise the Lord. But I th thought they made me look younger. Praise God. <laughs> but faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, it's a continual process. Yes. It's not something you just do for a week. No. You know, take a sabbatical or something, go to the mountain and, and just confess to the trees. And stuff. No, it has to be an ongoing thing. It has to be a regular routine way of living your life. When the negative thought comes, you replace it with a God thought. Yeah. With a, you know, you can't say what you're not thinking, so get the Word of God into your mind. If you have to, just go read it. You don't have to memorize it. Just get a concordance. Go find the Scripture that's going to fit whatever the issue is you're dealing with and keep saying it until you get the results. Yeah. That's how it works. Praise the Lord. Psalms, uh, let's go back to Psalms 103 where we started. Psalms 103 only let's go to verse uh, 19 and 20. I want to show you something interesting here. Remember Jesus said, the, the, the Pharisees they were always railing and ranting about him. And he said uh, he was the son of God, a uh, little lower than the angels, blah, 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 blah. And they said, what is this guy? He's nuts. He's, uh, you know, he's out of his mind. He's blaspheming. And Jesus said, your own scriptures. He said, what are you talking about? Your own scriptures say, are you not the sons of God? Right? That word is, uh, one of the words used there is angel. And they were saying, is he making himself an angel? Is he making himself God? What is he doing? They were just totally confused. Well, here's, here's an interesting scripture. He says, the Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, and that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now, what's interesting is that word there that they, they translate angel in the uh, Strong's Concordance, it's number 4397 in the Hebrew, and that word is malak or malak. And it means a prophet, a priest, a teacher, or an ambassador. We are all kings and priests. We are ambassadors for God. Paul said that we should all prophesy. Amen. He's talking about human beings here. People that have the ability to speak the words. Amen? He says they are all, these are all speaking ministries, if you will, right? So the kingdom 
ruleth over all. Right? Where is the kingdom? It's in you. He said the kingdom is near you, it shall be in you. Amen? The angels, these angels, us, these Malach, are doing his commandments. What are the commandments of God? David said, the words of God are his statutes and his commandments. Yeah. We think of commandment, we immediately think ten, rules, thing you got to know. He's saying the commandment is just the word of God. It's just whatever God said is a commandment, right? Mark chapter 11, verse 23. About done here. Mark 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So, here's some good advice. Say, thank you, God. I am redeemed from the curse of the law and delivered from the authority of darkness in Jesus' name. I'm blessed coming in and going out. Blessed in the basket, blessed in the store. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. Whatever I do will prosper. Praise God. I'm planted like a tree by the rivers of water. Amen. Now, I just all I just did was give voice to God's word. And that's what he tells us we should do. That's what Jesus did all the time he was here on this planet. He just said what his father said. Praise the Lord. We're not out to try to get God to do something he doesn't want to do. We're not trying to get something that God doesn't want us to have. We are out to receive what God has promised us in his word and to obtain it by God's method. Amen. And God's method is speaking it by faith. Just how you got saved. You believed in your heart. You confessed with your mouth. Jesus Christ is Lord. He died for my sins. Right? That's how everything, that's how you get into the kingdom. That's how you live in the kingdom. Paul said, having begun in the spirit, why do you now want to regress or digress and go back to the flesh? Go back to thinking it's your toil and your sweat that's going to produce something. It's not. Praise God. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Amen? And you don't have to go there now. I'm, I'll wrap up with this. Uh, we started out in Psalms 103, verse 5. He said, Who satisfieth thy mouth with good, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. He satisfies your mouth. In other words, what you're saying is what I'm going to give you. And if you're saying what I'm saying, your youth is going to be renewed just like the eagles. That's for all of us. Praise the Lord. Say what you mean, because that's what you're going to get. Praise the Lord. It's as easy as saying your sins are forgiven to say you're healed. So say what you want, and he will satisfy your mouth with good and renew your youth like the eagles. Praise God. That's the will of God, and that's where you focus your faith. Simple enough. He wants to give you the best that there is. Amen? The Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Praise the Lord. You can get rich in this world, but there's some sorrow that comes with it usually. Pain. There's some, there's some cost. You know what I'm saying? But God, when God does it, when he's behind it, there isn't any sorrow with it. It's just the joy. It's just the blessing of what you get to receive from God and what you're able then to bless others with. That's God's plan for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. We know, we all know movie stars and, you know, I'm talking about the mega rich. Miserable people. Killing themselves left and right. Killing one another. Doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It isn't because of lack of money. Amen? They've been made rich, but there's a lot of sorrow that came with it. Amen? But God wants to make you rich and add absolutely no sorrow to it. Amen? Whenever God blesses you, 
He's not depriving somebody else. He's not going to hurt somebody else or damage somebody else to bless you. He's going to bless you so you can be a blessing. This is how it works, church. It's not deep, deep, weird theology or, you know, goofy stuff. It's practical. It's simple if we just applied it. But like anything else, it is a discipline. You have to be consistent like you would be in anything else that you do. You can't be deviating and wavering back and forth. In fact, the scripture talks about the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Don't think that he can get anything from God. Not because God doesn't want to give him, because God's already paid for it. But God knows the only way you can get access to it is by focusing on what God has promised and keeping your faith attached to that. If you start looking at the facts, it'll pull you right back into the natural realm where you're saying, I don't see how this can ever be worked. I don't, I don't understand. Been through it too many times. She'll never change. He'll never change. This will never change. My finances will always be like that. You know what I mean? As long as we're saying that, we keep reaping it. But there is a harvest out there, amen, that God wants to give us that is exceeding abundantly above anything we've even imagined. And I tell you, I've, I've got a pretty good imagination. I've dreamed up some pretty wild stuff, amen? And God said, you haven't even scratched the surface, son. Amen? Give him a hand clap this morning. Please. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Thanks again, visitors. Appreciate y'all being here. Loved having you. Hope you'll come back again. Go in the power of his word. Amen. And nothing can hold you back. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.